So here we are looking back inside the Taylor 65B signal generator and uh, the components of order have arrived so uh, plan today is to swap them out and uh, hopefully when we've replaced this, this mains lead with a proper 3 core and made a good quality earth connection to the chassis we'll maybe try just to bring it up um, slowly on a variac with a current limiting and see if um, see if the valves light up and uh, hopefully make some progress. So I just want to show you the components. That resistor was um, is very dark. Um, not entirely sure what wattage that was originally. It's obviously quite an old one. Uh, but looking at the size that I've, the room I've got there to fit a component, I've actually managed to get the correct value in 5 watts. It'll still fit in there. Uh, and there's uh, with the 5 watt heat dissipation capacity there's clearly not too much problem with uh, that getting too hot so I was pleased to do that. These electrolytic capacitors here, don't know how well you can see, I'm going to try and bring it a little bit nearer the camera to show you. You can see there there is some green corrosion on those leads which would suggest that something nasty has leaked out of the inside. Um, these capacitors, um, I'm assuming they're original, those look certainly look original there as does that one uh, you know they're 70 plus years old so these are four microfarads at 250 volts and the nearest I can get is 4.7 microfarads and this is a uh, electrolytic capacitor 4.7 microfarads at 450 volts and as you can see things have got a little bit smaller in the last um, 70 years so that's uh, same value but actually a couple of hundred volts higher in the terms of the working voltage. So I'm going to be replacing those two. I can see that the um, wires have been coiled around the connection so I'm not going to try too hard, particularly in the area where these uh, thin wires from the modulation transformer are attached. I'll probably just cut these off and then just, just uh, clean up and resolder on top of them so that uh, I don't um, risk damaging any of the, um, the fine wires from these windings. Um, across here we've got three uh, wax and paper capacitors, two here and one here, all different values, Just probably you can just see that one in there. Um, and again, uh, these are both, uh, this is 0.03 microfarads, that's 0.05, and they're all 350 volts uh, DC working. So the nearest ones I can get here, um, that's actually 630 volts working, that's going to be going there, it's a polymer capacitor, just to show you there, quite a bit smaller and uh, the same there for, for that one. Now you notice on here there's a black line at uh, this end of the capacitors and that usually signifies that that's the end of the capacitor where the which is the wire is connected to the outer foil in other words you get a bit of a, a shielding effect and some capacitors come with that on now some don't so as you can see here in these three uh, these didn't come marked up and I've put these black lines on. Uh, I've had them on the oscilloscope and identified which uh, which lead is attached to the outer foil. And so I shall be putting those in in that direction. Um, this mains lead here, obviously, that's a 1940s mains lead. Um, rubber insulation, clearly well past its best now. Um, and also, as I've mentioned before, no earth connection. So I'm going to be fitting a good quality um, three core lead to that, attaching to there, and then I'll find a suitable point somewhere on the chassis, probably there's a bolt down there, so possibly down there, to make sure we get a very good uh, sturdy earth connection um, so that the um, the chassis of the, of the unit is um, connected to, to mains earth, which should also help with, with screening. Um, and then when we've done that, we'll we'll see how we go from there. Inside here, um, which I'll actually just remove and show you, is a, a mains filter, which I mentioned before when I looked at the circuit diagram. And that can, which is a shield for that little filter unit, you can just get it so you can see it there. It's four capacitors and two coils in there. Now those are micro capacitors, so they're probably all right. I shall be checking the continuity of those coils and making sure I haven't got any 
um, continuity issues on the primary side of the mains transformer before I think about applying some voltage to it. But then uh, we'll, we'll try and bring it up on the very. I can see um, see how we get on. The reason I'm quite keen to um, do it that way is these these original um, restraints that have been very carefully tied onto the valves. I'm hoping the valves are okay, and I'm hoping they'll light up. And if they do. I don't want to disturb these ties because I'm not going to get uh, a tie like that again. It'd be nice to um, to leave it original if I possibly can. If I can't, I can't, but it would be nice to try. So that's the plan. Um, so I'm going to uh, get set up for soldering and then um, we'll, we'll see how we get on. Okay, so I've removed these two uh, large electrolytics and uh, again you can maybe see if it'll focus there. Um, green incrustation and certainly looks like something unpleasant has um, bleaked out of there. So now to um, to fit the uh, more modern replacements, uh, positive at the top and as you can see it's going to give me plenty of room to work. I've just cut these wires off and uh, I don't intend to um, uh, to actually try and unwrap them. I don't want to, to um, uh, disturb the circuit board too much so I'll just cut off the tails so they're a little bit shorter. And then we'll um, get on with uh, reattaching the new components. So hopefully um, we're going to get a good result from this. Okay, that's there, and then I'm just going to bend that round, but I'm not actually going to. Uh, I'm not going to wrap it like the other ones were. Um, hopefully, this is going to give good service, and um, far into the future, somebody uh, uh, is going to be able to recap this long after I've gone, and uh, I don't want to make it uh, too difficult for them. So that's the plan, anyway. I'm not particularly happy with how oh, that's, that's better, yeah, that's much better. I think I was uh, doing a thoroughly good job of um, creating a dry joint there, <laughs> uh, which is certainly something I, I definitely don't want. And then this one down here, I'm just going to add a little bit of solder to that contact. bit of modern solder mixed in with the uh, the original solder. It certainly does look like it was um, the original solder. So I'll just melt that and let it solidify there. Yep, that's good. And then take that up straight and I'm going to take that across there. Being careful to not get too close to the thin wire which comes off the modulation transformer. Um, a little bit of modern solder on there. And uh, just wipe the tip of the iron off a little bit that doesn't you probably can't see that on the camera that doesn't look great um, so I'll add a little bit more that's better mm -hmm. yeah that looks like a much more reliable connection um, so I'll remove these end pieces and like so and then Carefully, especially, being especially careful with that one as I'm quite close to that thin wire. Okay, that's the two electrolytics replaced. As you can see, they really are considerably smaller than the, than the originals, but uh, hopefully be better quality and uh, 
modern manufacturing te techniques mean that uh, uh, we'll get a, a good result. I will check these later and uh, see uh, see what kind of result they give me on with my capacitor um, tester. Okay, I'm just uh, replacing the um, last of the wax and paper capacitors, the 0.01 microfarad, which is uh, in the output to the uh, to the output socket, it comes from the attenuation network, and it has to pass through uh, that part of the shield there, and uh, that's the original capacitor. It came out uh, very easily, and uh, the replacement's considerably smaller. But what I have managed to do, which I'm quite pleased about, this sleeve here is actually the original. Um, insulation sleeve that um, was over that lead of the capacitor as it passes through there and I was just going to pop some heat shrink on but this is perfectly serviceable so I'm going to use that uh, so that's a little bit of originality I've managed to to hang on to so that's good okay so there is the new capacitor in place and you can see I've managed to as I said before keep the original little bit of shield in there so that's a, a nice um, little bit of uh, originality that I've managed to hang on to and again the capacitor that's replaced that which is actually um, 630 volts working as opposed to 350 on this wax paper one you can see considerably smaller so all the capacitors are now replaced um, uh, here 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 and here so next job is to, to look at the mains lead okay so here we are with the uh, mains lead attached Capacitors and resistor repl replaced. There's the new uh, 5.6k ohm resistor. Capacitors here and here. Those two you've seen and also the one down in there. And the mains lead now. Um, originally it was just a two core with no earth. What I've done now is put a piece of three core cable on so it's soldered into the uh, usual feed points there before the switch. Um, I had to mark on live and neutral because in the wiring scheme of of the unit the blue lead here was attached to the red wire in the old mains lead which is um, which is the line side and that's uh, that's brown these days in modern parlance there was a nice little original bit of uh, properly tied cable there I've had to do the model equ modern equivalent of that which is a, a cable tie so those are soldered in now the obvious place for um, an earth connection the nearest place was either soldering onto the back of there or on top of this can uh, but I, what I didn't want to do was um, add an earth connection which was easy to remove or just relied on a, on components um, uh, conducting through the body. So I've taken the, I've, what I've now done is taken the earth lead around the back of that switch under the transformer and uh, you can see it's attached there to one of the um, transformer mounting bolts. I checked for continuity before I used that and it's definitely uh, attached to the chassis so that's a nice solid connection and if anybody does take it apart in future um, and they do want to take this can off they won't, they won't, they won't need to remove the earth lead which obviously is potentially uh, an easy way to forget to attach it so I thought that was a better option so next job is to uh, put a mains plug on and then um, very gingerly apply some uh, some voltage to it so um, Let's uh, let's see how we get on with that. Okay, well we're ready to uh, to very gingerly try the uh, Taylor 65B with some uh, with some mains voltage. Um, got the mains lead now attached to the variac, which is uh, over there. You can't quite see the variac; it's sort of behind the meter. Uh, currently set at uh, zero volts, uh, and the variac is fed by my dim bulb. Dim bulb um, current limiting uh, system so uh, hopefully um, that's going to uh, stay dim um, if it gets too bright it means uh, the device is um, already too much so I'm just going to first of all check that this is working I've got this meter just set up to the mains input uh, currently the main switch is off on the unit so I'm just going to apply a little bit of voltage to the area and hopefully we should see yep there we go so up to about uh, about 20 volts there um, and uh, all looks good so I'm going to turn that down now and I'm going to turn the tailor on so that's the first setting which is um, uh, RF oscillator and also AF oscillator modulating the RF tone um, so we're going to very gingerly apply a little bit of voltage and see if we can get the see if we can detect the um, uh, the dial light 
um, lighting up, which will mean we've got voltage to the uh, valve heaters. Okay, so I'm going to go up to about 15 volts initially, 15, 16 volts, and nothing appears to be smoking yet. <laughs> so we'll go up now to about 30 volts and see uh, how we get on there. Okay, that's 30 volts, and I'm looking to see if I can see any hint of lighting from the um, dial light. I can't yet. Nothing obvious amongst the valves, but there again, there's also nothing, uh, nothing smelling too bad. So I'm going to carry on a little bit more, see if um, see if she'll come to life. Right, so there we are at about 50 volts. Again, I can't see anything on the dial light. Um, what I am going to do at this point, though, is just get another meter, and uh, I'm just going to see if uh, we do actually have uh, AC volts on the two terminals for the um, for the dial light. If I can hold it steady enough while I do it. And yeah, that's saying uh, about 1.2 volts AC. Um, so I'm going to see if that changes when I turn the variac up a bit more. So I'll go up to about 70 volts. Okay, that's 70 volts. It was 1.2 volts AC. I'm going to try it again. Apologies if my hands are in front of the, the picture. Yeah, that's up at 1.7. So it is, does appear to be slowly but surely bringing up the... Um, and yes, there's a little bit of a glow in the dial light. It's unlikely you'll see that from where you are in the camera. But uh, indeed, the dial light has begun to glow. So I'm going to carry it up to about 100 volts. Remember, in, we're in the UK, so final voltage is about 220. Um, so there's 100 volts. And I'm now going to have a look and see if I can notice any heating in the valves, which I can't at the moment, but the dial light is... Uh, Glowing fairly dimly. Uh, we want 6.3 volts on the uh, on the valve heating circuit, and currently we have got. If I can get my meter to stop, currently we've got about 2.7 volts. So I need a bit more. So I'm going to go up, keep on winding her up now. Obviously, just being very careful. Don't uh, want anything to go bang unless I can possibly help it. Um, so there's 150 volts and uh, dial light is noticeably brighter now. Um, still can't detect any obvious signs of life in the valves, but that's a little bit harder to see. To be Ah, one of the valves is definitely... Ah, yeah, I can see those two have got heaters. I can't see quite so well on the... Uh, so the rectifier, definitely, and uh, the... I think that's the... Yes, that's the AF oscillator uh, are definitely doing something. Now I've got an oscilloscope um, attached to, so I'm going to just uh, move the camera a little bit now if I can. Um, and apologies for the noise and just maybe move back a little bit so you can see everything. So I've got this oscilloscope and I'm just going to attach the probe to the RF output and see if um, it's detecting any signal. Um, okay, so I'm just, uh, I'm actually going to hook it on which allows me to would allow me to uh, adjust the scope. So there's nothing, no, nothing uh, very obvious there at the minute. So I'm going to carry on up a little bit, uh, a little bit warmer, and see if um, see if we get anything else. So I'm going to go up now to about 170 volts. So there's um, 170 volts, and I can certainly see. These two valves definitely have a heater, and so does that one. So all three valves are now in emission, which is good. Um, nothing's gone bang, <laughs> which is always encouraging. Um, and currently, yeah, still looking, well, seems to be looking okay. Um, so I'm going to carry on up to about 200 volts.
yeah, there we go. That's that's two. That's 200 volts, um, and all three valves are in emission, which is uh, a good sign. I'm not detecting anything at all on that output, so was hoping I might, but then of course, don't know. Uh, don't really know. Um, how well she was working in when she was last uh, last in use. Um, okay, well that's a positive start. We've got three valves uh, are all uh, heating correctly, so they're uh, hopefully nothing going to be too wrong with them. We've got um, dial light warming up nicely. Nothing, um, nothing smelling too bad, and certainly haven't got any short circuits. So I'm just going to bring it up to about um, 220, which is about Roughly, well, so the UK mines voltage is somewhere in that area. Um, I didn't check before I started, but there's 220, and uh, the dim bulb is still reasonably dim. We are obviously drawing some current, but I um, uh, don't know whether, how well you can see it, but um, you probably can't see it, it's probably too bright. But um, all three valves are definitely, definitely in emission. I can see heaters glowing in all three, so that's. Um, that's a very good start. I'm just going to quickly check again that I haven't got anything obvious on the output there. No, I don't seem to have. Um, no obvious RF output. OK, well, I'm going to consult the circuit diagram and start um, having a look at a few test points and see uh, see what kind of voltage we get. But uh, that's a very good start. Um, it didn't uh, smoke and nothing went bang. Uh, always good. Okay, I've got the Taylor 65B powered up again, and I've just been going around checking some voltages, um, and they're not uh, the ones I can actually get to um, are about as expected according to the various notes that I've got. Certainly got uh, HT voltage present on on valve two, which is the audio oscillator, and uh, got the expected voltage on the on the cathode at. Um, of V1, the rectifier. Um, I need to try and um, get a probe in to check the the anode of uh, the RF oscillator. But um, one bit of good news is um, I've currently got it set into uh, modulation mode, where it modulates approximately um, 400 hertz tone. Uh, and if I hook the scope up to the, um, if I can get the probe to hook on there, if I hook the scope scope up to the uh, audio output um, you can just see can't see it terribly well but you can see there is a sine wave there it's not not too badly shaped slightly slightly skewed but it is nonetheless a, a, a sine wave and uh, looking at that um, I'm on the one microsecond per division so I've got about uh, two two microseconds uh, for a wavelength there which equates to about 500 Hertz and the frequency counter um, gives me a, a similar answer to that. So, audio, certainly uh, valve 2, um, the audio oscillator is running and producing um, 500 hertz oscillation. So, uh, that's half of it working okay. I'm going to just uh, turn it around in a minute and just see if I can uh, get in and check the um, anode voltage on V1 and see if I can detect some... Uh, some RF uh, oscillation. Um, so some good progress. Okay so I've got the Taylor uh, 65B um, in its more normal operating position and I've just got a quarter inch jack plugged into the uh, audio frequency output. I've got it attached to the digital scope this time and if I probe the output um, I actually get uh, a rough approximation of a sine wave as you can see there and it's, it's, the scope is saying around about 490 something like that hertz which is uh, I guess similar to the result I was getting from the analog scope so that's good. If I turn the machine from uh, internal modulation to external modulation uh, I now lose that signal um, as I would expect to uh, because the uh, jack now acts as an input for an external modulator um, so it shows that we're, that, uh, we're working anyway. I'm going to now move the pogs around onto the RF section and uh, 
pretty sure you've made some progress here too so frequency here and if I if I adjust my jumping about a bit I'm just going to get the scope to auto detect this it does a better job than me so as you can see as I tune the um, the frequency there you can see that um, the frequency is indeed changing so although there's things clearly not right on the uh, in terms of the shape of the wave yet it is nonetheless um, showing you that the uh, RF oscillation is, is taking place um, which is great and uh, you can see it there if I now switch back to the internal modulator that's just this is in carry wave position I've got to internal modulator looks a little bit crazy there but if I now uh, tweak the time base a little bit um, and hopefully get to the point where you can see that uh, there we go so I'll just turn that down I'm just going to uh, pause the scope and as you can see we've got a a modulated envelope there, amplitude modulation. Um, so the essential facilities are working. I think I may need to replace a couple of of the small value capacitors in the RF section. I think that probably is what's causing the issues with the uh, rather oddly shaped RF um, uh, waveform. However, what it is telling me is that uh, we've got uh, uh, anode voltage on both valves. All three valves are lighting up, which is good. We've got audio frequency uh, oscillation, and we've also got um, uh, radio frequency oscillation. So, uh, lots and lots of progress today. So, I think the next uh, the next uh, thing to do is to go back to um, the uh, old components because I'm just intrigued to find out what uh, what values they're going to um, tell me they've got. So, we'll uh, uh, have a look at that next. But uh, good progress and very pleased. Okay, well that's it for part three of the Taylor 65B signal generator project. Got some of the components that I took out of the uh, instrument earlier, where you saw some of the desoldering going on, and I've had them on my component tester and on a multimeter, and I'm getting some pretty random results. So I think it's faced at first um, fair to say that. On the whole, these uh, were unquestionably badly in need of replacement. Um, those two electrolytic capacitors, uh, depending on which machine you measure them on, they get totally different results, certainly nothing like each other. And surprise, surprise, the uh, paper and wax capacitors were also uh, uh, a very long way from the values. In the case of, uh, I think it was that one, um, I think it's more like a resistor, so uh, definitely needed replacing. The five. 0.6k ohm, I've checked it again, it measures 11.6k, so definitely needed replacing. Um, there's two more capacitors, they um, in, in the uh, RF oscillator section a, a 2 nanofarad and a uh, 500 picofarad. Uh, I hadn't replaced those, so I was hoping that as they were mica they might be okay. Uh, I've just ordered some replacements, so um, you can um, eagerly await part 4 where I'll get those installed and hopefully we start to get a, uh, a, a cleaner looking RF signal. Well that's that's the expectation anyway, certainly from me. Um, so thanks very much for watching, hope it's, um, hope it's been interesting. You've seen it as it happens, I tried as best as I could to film it live which is probably why I was rambling a bit when I was talking. Um, and so, but, but hopefully you've got an idea of um, some of the uh, the stuff that's gone on there as I've tried to bring it back to life. So I'm very pleased to say, yeah, we've gone from, I had no idea if it would work at all, to actually does oscillate. Um, so that's great news. So now I just need to sort of tidy up the loose ends. So um, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Um, if you've liked it, please click the like button. It um, would be great if you could subscribe, that would help me. And um, look forward to the next one.